The meditation worked for Anakin. He finally confronted Avis during the meditation. Avis told Anakin that everyone has a dark side, including Obi-Wan, Mace Windu, and Yoda. That is what powers the Force user, both light and dark. When there's light, there will be shadows casted. While there are shadows, one can see the light. Avis hinted that Avis is completely removed from him, then Anakin's link within the Force will be completely removed both the light and dark. Anakin will not be able to use the force without Avis. Anakin was well aware of that. He was convinced that anything can be solved by the force. But he was wrong. It was just simple human arrogance. Avis then continued to taunt Anakin that he was willing to cast all what he had achieved so hard throughout the years aside and lower himself to a simple being. Anakin said that Padme and his friends are enough. Being a force user is nothing without them. He also said he was a simple human all along. He couldn't even save a few Wookiees or Gungans from a few walking pieces of metals. He accepted that he's not all powerful. Avis then asked Anakin about prolonging Padme's life and preventing her from harm. Anakin then told Avis he can use Palpatine's knowledge of cloning and Sith alchemy to help him save Padme. Avis asked if Anakin was really that naive that the Emperor would want Anakin without Avis. Avis then hinted that he had implanted part of his soul in Padme, and he will always find a way to return, even if Anakin truly destroys him. Anakin then used all his powers to remove all the Force sensitivity within him. Anakin disconnected his link in the Force and he is no longer a Jedi. Avis was destroyed. However, Anakin started to regret his decision when Palpatine used the Force to contact him. He told Anakin that he had made a great mistake. Padme is dying with Avis' disappearance. Palpatine told Anakin how he felt that Avis had implanted Sith alchemy on Padme, and only his powers can save her. In the Chancellor's office, Mace Windu and the three Jedi Masters arrived. Palpatine in this did not ignite his lightsaber. He used the Force to fight the Jedi Masters. He altered the molecular structures of Agent Kohler, freezing all molecules which made him froze to death. Palpatine lifted Sassy Ting up in the air and shot purple lightning at him. The force lightning dried up the air around him super fast and the friction between the air molecules turned into flames. It incinerated Sassy Ting to death. Not wasting any time, Palpatine force crushed Kit Fisto's torso, killing him. Throughout this fight, it showed that there was actually force corruption. But Palpatine lost his concentration and Mace Windu was finally able to corner him. Anakin went and confronted the two. Palpatine's face was disfigured and he was out of breath. Palpatine's purple force lightning seriously damaged Mace Windu. His robes were burnt and charred. Mace Windu sees Palpatine too much of a threat. I need him! No! His lightsaber blocked Mace's blade. Knowing that Mace is at his most vulnerable, Palpatine left behind Mace and grabbed his face. The red force lightning ignited from his fingertips. This shows the difference in colors of force lightning meant different forms of attacks. Mace's face started to blister and within seconds he crumbles into dust. Anakin was horrified with what happened. As Anakin does not have any force energy left, he was powerless against Palpatine. Palpatine approached him and freed Vader from Anakin's mental block and imprisoned Anakin within him. Anakin was gone. Avis was back and he fully embraced the name as Vader. Vader remembered Anakin's secrets would be like trying to remember all the details of a dream. It is very hard. There are just a feeling of emotions and minor details lost here and there. Vader knelt before Palpatine, thanking him for freeing him. Palpatine then revealed to Vader there are many ways that the dark side have to offer for immortality. Palpatine had discovered immortality by transferring a soul into a new clone body, revealing the secrets of Boba Fett's cloning project. Palpatine also explained the reason why he waged war as the Korriban Sith alchemy has the ability to prolong life and increase powers by absorbing the deaths around them, whether the death was caused by them or not. The more energetic the life is, the more powerful the absorber shall be. Vader was intrigued. Palpatine told him that his master, Darth Plagueis, was trying to perfect a form of Sith alchemy. He was planning to create a locket which acts as an energy bank. Every time he absorbs life energy, he will deposit that excess of life energy into the locket. When he is dying, he will take the locket and absorb the life energy that he has placed within it. Usually, he can just keep all the life energy to himself and lengthen his life's and powers. But with this locket, he could save anyone else from death without draining his own energy. As more life energy was deposited to this entity, it defied him and it started to drain not only what Plagueis wanted to deposit in, but the rest of his life force. Desperate, his master used all his powers to abandon him. However, years later, the seal was broken by a Jedi. After it merged with the Jedi, the life force drained the rest of Plagueis' life, and since Plagueis was weak and had taught everything he knew, Sidious killed him. That life force became Vader. Palpatine proposed if they work together and perfect it, a life bank is not impossible. Vader was destined to be the Chosen One, and the Sith version of the prophecy is to exterminate the Jedi. Sidious was planning to take over the Republic because he sees that the Sith are the rightful rulers 
and with her strength and knowledge, should be the ultimate decision makers of the galaxy. He is in the quest of peace. In order for peace to truly occur, freedom needs to be removed to ensure prosperity and order to take place. He wanted to continue his empire and pass the throne from master to apprentice. Even though ruthless and amoral, it would ensure people to be protected and alive. Those who wish to have liberty over death, so be it. Sidious then told Vader he can be a worthy successor, with unimaginable powers. Vader then swore allegiance with Sidious. Palpatine then traveled to the Senate to give a speech that the Jedi Order had turned traitorous and corrupt. Jedi Hayden was actually kinda popular over the Clone Wars. Palpatine showed a security hologram which audiences could tell it was edited to make it seem like the Jedi are trying to kill him. He blamed the corruption of the democratic system that had failed dearly, even corrupting the good of all good, which are the Jedi, and supported that the Senate's proposal into transforming into a galactic empire is a correct choice. He reasoned that the Jedi are trying to corrupt the Galactic Republic into a galactic communist all along. But let's face it, most religions have socialistic ideals. The Senate voted to amend the law with rogue Jedis. Rather than court-martialing just one Jedi, it would be indiscriminately eliminate the entire Jedi Order for betraying their empire. Termination of all Jedi and illegalized Jedi Order is now constitutional. The Senate agreed and Palpatine put the law into action. To test Vader's loyalty and strength, Palpatine sent him to the Jedi Temple. He told Vader to execute as many Jedi as possible because by incorporating his victim's life essence to his, it will amplify his strength and lengthen his life. His stealth alchemy can only be used after a dark deed has been done, like killing Darth Maul. Without performing any evil, he cannot perform any dark arts again. During the temple raid, Vader was seen hacking down Atkin's friends and Jedis. There were duels between Vader and some Jedi Knights and Masters. All of them were defeated. Vader was far too powerful and aggressive. During the Battle of Kashyyyk, when Order 66 was executed, the rest of the clones and stormtroopers were forced to turn against their Jedi generals. Obi-Wan was ordered to be killed. Wookiees tried to help him out, but were mercilessly gunned down by stormtroopers. Obi-Wan took a close hit to the face and fell into a sinkhole. After Padme found out about the Order 66 being amended, he took a Separatist bomber to find Obi-Wan. Obi-Wan was in poor condition and was barely alive. He hid in a cave within the sinkholes and he met Qui-Gon's spirit and the Force, and where to find Yoda for further training to fight against the dark side. But he was too exhausted, so he passed out. Padme went there just in time and saved Obi-Wan before he died from blood loss. When he was placed in the bomber, Padme activated the medical facility on board and healed Obi-Wan's burns and wounds. Throughout different Republic planets, there were riots on the streets. Defenseless Jedis ranging from teenagers to children were attacked by civilians. The Jedi tried to defend themselves, but they cannot attack these powerless civilians. They were conflicted by either held back by the Jedi ways or protect themselves and harm these civilians. After escaping the Imperial fleet, Obi-Wan and Padme got to hyperspace and contacted Senator Organa. Obi-Wan told Senator Organa to meet at Dagobah. The bomber ran out of fuel and Obi-Wan and Padme came across Tatooine. Padme landed on the desert planet on the outer skirts. Obi-Wan was then on the move to find resources to refuel his ship. Padme's wounds from the Separatist flagship crash had reopened again during their escape from Kashyyyk. So she stayed with the ship, and Obi-Wan used the medical equipment to seal her wounds and let her rest. The Stormtrooper intelligence on Kashyyyk finally located the frequency signal that controls the rest of the droid army that originated from. They sent Palpatine the coordinates. It's located on the surface in Naboo. Palpatine then contacted Vader. Vader reported his deals to Palpatine. Palpatine praised Vader for what he had done and said he felt a great tremor in the Force, where it is starting to get balanced in the dark side's point of view. When the Force is equally dark everywhere, it is imbalance. Palpatine then ordered Vader to Naboo to terminate the rest of the Separatist leaders alone. Only Palpatine and the 1% of the CIS knows about Palpatine is orchestrating the Clone War. On Tatooine, Obi-Wan rescued the two moisture farmers from Sand People. One of the farmers fainted from his wounds. Obi-Wan helped the two farmers back on their speeder and returned back to their homestead. While traveling across the desert, Obi-Wan revealed that he is a Jedi who crash-landed here during a mission. The wife got interested and started asking if a family mystery can be solved by his knowledge of the Force. The farmer is called Owen Lairs and the wife's name is Baru. Her husband had a distant cousin called Shimi Skywalker, part of a certain Skywalker family who once conducted a business by navigating spice frigates. Shimi was recruited by the Jedi Order at a young age and was on a mission to the Outer Rim, but her ship crash landed on Tatooine, close by her home ranch, and she was rescued by his nephew, Owen Lairs. Owen Lairs took her to the hospital operated by medical droids. At first she seemed to be holding up, but after a while delirious and the medical droid says she was suddenly 3 months pregnant overnight. Her sanity fluctuates. 
Obi-Wan realized her husband might probably be related to Anakin because Shimi Skywalker's story was highly similar to Qui-Gon's story and it was the same Shimi that he looked up in the Jedi archives. Obi-Wan concluded that Shimi was hit by a force bomb, the attack was so powerful and it grew into a new living being and it needed a new living host, Shimi. The aunt was not in adulthood yet when she was pregnant, never had a boyfriend or anyone that close, since the Jedi code forbids it. They scanned her womb to see who the biological father was. The womb's chromosomes were identical to hers except it was a Y chromosome instead of an X chromosome. Once she had gotten out of the hospital, she had amnesia but was still functioning well. She had forgotten about her latest mission and sometimes who she was. Owen wants to take care of her for the rest of her life and does not want her to return back to Coruscant as he despises the Jedi, the Republic and now the Separatists as well. On the day of harvest, the entire ranch was ransacked by sand people. Shimu was lost in the chaos. Owen spent all his family fortune to find her but failed. His empire of moisture farms had been reduced to just one crummy one in the most inconvenient location. Shimu was lost forever. Obi-Wan told her that his apprentice is Anakin Skywalker and he may be Shimi's son. Beru was surprised. Anakin is highly popular among the Outer Rim, a legend where a slave became a legendary war hero during the Clone Wars. During this time, many infants were named after him, either his first name or last name. Obi-Wan asked if he could keep a sample of Beru's necklace and kept a sample of the farmer's blood from his old bandage. Beru's necklace was made by Shimi while she stayed with them. It was made with tattooing tradition of putting a hair of the maker in the threads. Once Owen woke up, he was really hostile towards Obi-Wan after he learned that he was a Jedi and fought for the Republic. Owen Lars is completely overprotective, xenophobic, and paranoid, which explains why he lied to Luke Skywalker all his life. I'd like to give a shout out to all these wonderful people who took photos of their awesome collection of Star Wars figures in this video. Check out their accounts on DeviantArt on the links here, they are amazing people. If you like it, give it a thumbs up, favorite and share this video. Click to view the next part. I'd like to give a shout out to all these wonderful people who took photos of their awesome collection of Star Wars figures in this video.